pray to the most high the soldier Gideon when he went over I pray you understand now this is the thing you mentioned what are we supposed to do now go to war is that correct should we go to war should we take up arms against the government do you agree with that statement so what are we supposed to do let's find out listen to this Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 1 Ecclesiastes that book was written by Solomon you understand Solomon Ecclesiastes means the preacher now listen to what he said because I know you've heard the scriptures, we've been oppressed, we've been going through slavery. So you're like, Dad, what are we supposed to do? Listen to this right here, 401. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Under the sun means what? Everything that happens to us. Everything that happens. But what does it mean under the sun? Meaning on this planet Earth. You understand? Under the sun means in this earth, all the oppressions that happens in this world. And he was referring to who? The children of Israel. Because Solomon was of the tribe of what? Judah. His father was King David. You understand? Read. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. The tears of such as were oppressed. What nation of people under the sun is being oppressed? Um, above measure. Above measure, out of all the nations upon this right, earth, right. who goes to the most oppression? Right. So-called Negroes. I know you was probably thinking of the Africans on Feed the Channel. What is it called? Feed the Children. Feed the Children. Right, right. I know you're probably thinking of the Africans, but it's not them. It's us. It's us. Why? Because we built this country without we was the only there was no, there was no, we didn't get paid. You're you understand? Right. You're right. We did not get paid. We were the only ones labor. So I listen good. Listen good to the scripture. Watch, hold on. Read it again. So I returned Watch. and considered all the oppressions. All the oppressions, right? That are done under the sun. Right? And be now wait. What's the way that we get oppressed? What fills the neighborhoods of Brownsville, Brooklyn? Queens, Staten Island, South what do you Bronx. have? And where? South Bronx. South Bronx. What do they have in those neighborhoods? Gangs. Yes. Gangs. I'm a gang member. I'm gang. What gang are you in? I'm blood. Now look at that. Let me ask you a question. Now wait. Read that again. So I returned and considered all the oppressions. So he said, I considered all the oppressions, right? What's your name? Elpidio. Elpidio. So you in the blood gang. Okay. That are done under the sun. Right. And behold the tears of such as were oppressed. Right. And they had no comforter. And they, meaning the children of Israel, the blacks and the Hispanics, right? Had what? Had no comforter. Had no comforter. Had no comforter. What do you think we in all these? Why do you think people in religions? They're trying to find comfort. They're trying to find hope. You some, understand? Read. And on the side of their oppressors. And on the side of their what? Of their oppressors. Who, it has an S on that, right? right? Yes. Who are our oppressors? It starts with what? The so-called white man. Then after that, you got the Chinese, the Japanese, the East Indians, the Africans. Our oppressors have a seat in the UN. The United Nations building you're in Manhattan. You're right. You're right. You understand? You're right. 100%. Read that part again. And, and on the side of their oppressors. On the side of all the other nations, starting first with Esau. That's what God calls the so-called white man. Read. There was power. There was what? There was power. There was power. Power. Come on. But they had no comforter. But they had no comforter. We had no comforter. So how does the white man have power? By his military, by his money, by his philosophies. He deceives the whole world. And what's one thing the white man loves? Black on black crime. What do you think the blood gangs is about? What do you think the blood gangs is about? The thing is, originally, one three. originally, a lot of people don't see it for what it was. It wasn't originally meant to kill each other. It was meant to fucking bring your people up and basically take care of each other. But a lot of white people, a lot of cops dressing them like blood. What, now, wait, 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 now here's my question. What does blood stand for? Brotherly, Brotherly love, what? love over oppression and deception. Now wait. Bloods kill Crips. Is that brotherly love? No, it's so not. So that's contradicting what you are about. That's right. That is contradicting that's right. what your gang 
title what the acronym stands for. That's right. That's right. CRIP stands for Community Revolution and Progress. Yeah. They ain't doing, they ain't starting no revolution. That's right. All they're doing is killing each yeah, other. Know, That's it. it. Come on, read Isaiah 1 and 3. I say You gotta it. understand, you gotta come up out of that blood game. You gotta, any, any Crips you know, any Bloods you know, any Pyros you know, you gotta stay away from them. Cause it's gonna get you killed. Come on. Isaiah chapter 1 sure, verse 3. Come on. The ox knoweth his owner. The ox knows his owner. God has our people down to a science in this Bible. God is about to make a comparison between us and an animal. You understand? You with me? Come on. And the ass his master's crib. And the ass, God says he knows his master's crib. Come on. But Israel does Now, God says, but Israel. What? But Israel does not know. Israel does not know. Israel doesn't know what? My people does not consider. What was your name again? LPDL, right? And what was your name again? Antoine. The Bible just compared our nation of people to two animals, an ox and an ass. Read the characteristics of those two animals and watch. When you read the Bible, remember earlier you made a statement, I was listening. You said to the soldier there, you said, listen, why does the Bible, the way you're explaining it to me right now, it's very plain. But why when I read it, it's not that plain? Why is it so hard to understand? How come the Bible isn't written exactly as you're explaining it to me, right? That was your question. God uses parables, allegories, similitudes. When you read the Bible, God uses a lot of comparisons for easier words. A lot of times when you read the scripture, God will compare a lot of things. So right now, God is comparing our nation of people to two type of animals. You understand? So read it again. The ox knoweth his own. So God says, listen, out of all my creations, look at the ox. God says, that dumb animal I made, he knows what? The ox knoweth his own. He knows who owns him. He represents the old Right, the ox knows his owner. Come on. And the ass his master's crib. Now wait, a lot of times as a form of insult, people will call the next person a jackass, right? And that's a form of insulting that person. Meaning what? You're dumb as the jackass. So now, God, the God of the Bible, compares us to the donkey, the ass. What about the ass? And the what? And the ass his master's crib. God says, listen, out of all the animals again, the jackass knows his crib. He knows who he belongs to. Read that part again. And the ass what? And the ass his master's crib. Don't some of you guys speak like that? Yo, I'm going to the crib. Yeah. Right. God got language too. We got to speak like how so God speaks. Made his likeness, his exactly. So the ass knows his master's crib, meaning his homeland. So God says, the, the ass knows his crib, the ox knows who owns him. Read. But, but, but listen, read. But Israel, but the Israelites, the Negroes and the Latinos, do not know. They don't know who owned them. My people do not consider. And they won't consider their true homeland. What did your brother say here earlier? He said, hey, I'm Asiatic. What does that mean? No, no. You, you didn't even know. I was looking at you. I was like, his brother don't even know what that meant. You, you look confused, puzzled. Like, I don't know what that means. No, the one thing I learned is that the Asiatic man, they said they come from Africa. So let me ask you a question. Prove to us that you're Asiatic. I don't come from Africa. But a lot of Hispanics say the same thing. We met Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, and what are you? I'm Asiatic. I'm the original man. What does that mean? That's just a smoke screen for I don't know who the hell I am. Because you can't be Adam. When you say you're you a man, I mean you're Adam. We can't be you Adam. You understand? That's just a smoke screen. That's just a brother who doesn't have enough humility to say, you know what, brother, I don't know who I am. I just heard some brother say two days ago that he's Asiatic, and it sounded good, so I'm using the same thing. Right. we got to be honest. Brother, God says here, we don't know who we are, and we don't know who owns us. Our owner is the Most High God. Our homeland is Jerusalem. You understand? You understand? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Thank you for before you go, go, before you go, I want you to stay for a little longer. Couple more scripture. If you gotta go, you gotta go. But 
I think this is this is definitely more important. Whatever you got to do right now, listen good. The reason why I wanted, the reason why actually I'm glad you were honest about that, because bro, a lot of deaths is because of gang activity. Right. By you saying in the blood gang, I'm glad you're honest, but bro, it just shows how much hatred you have in your heart. And you don't know what to do with that energy. You got so much anger, the black man has a lot of anger built up in him. But he doesn't know what to use it against. So you thought by joining the blood gang, you thought that was the answer. But brother, that's not the answer. God is gonna put you to death if you don't repent. Right. It's gonna happen. That's right. It's going, brother, it's going to happen, bro. It's gonna happen. It's just a matter of when. But if you're serious about your life, you're gonna return. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. Let's see this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Just last week, they mentioned a friend of mine said, yo, you heard what happened to homeboy? I said, what? He got shot in the eye. What happened? Drug dealing in the gang life. I was like, oh, all right. I kept it moving. I'm not going to cry because I knew what was going to happen. Right. Bad. For though we walk in the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh. He's in the flesh. You're in the flesh. We're all in the flesh. Though we walk in this body. Come on. We do not war after the flesh. But we don't war after the flesh. Although we're in this flesh, Paul is saying, we're not going to go to war. with. We're not going to war after the flesh, meaning take up arms. Look for the swords, look for gats, look for tech nines. You understand? We're not looking for that. Paul said this ain't no physical fight. You know who wars after the flesh? Gangs, gangs. I'm gonna give him a buck fifty. Come on, bro. You know what I mean? Listen, read it again. For though we walk in the flesh. So God says, although we walk in the flesh, come on. We do not war after the flesh. So by you being in this game, you have the question, you're looking for the answer, you don't know which way to go. He thinks that it, the gang life was the way to go. A lot of people think that, but it's not. There's a greater calling for you. So That's stop right. warring in the flesh. Come on, watch this. For the weapons of our warfare. So Paul says, listen, the weapons of our warfare. So bruh, it is a war. Yo, it is a war. You're just on the wrong turf. You understand? That's, that's right. Read it again. Yo, I don't understand nothing he's saying. All right, read it I again. I understand what he's saying. I'm glad you're honest. I understand what you're saying. No problem. I'm going to read it again. Thank you for telling me. I understand what you're saying. I'm going to be out there. That's why I don't get it. I'm going to be out there. Thank you for what you're doing. All right, no problem. You scared your arm as more than this, man. Thank you for what you're doing. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So, bro, leave that game, bro. Leave that game. The Most High is going to bring judgment to the it. Whether it's shot dead, slit, slit throat, I don't know. Jail. But leave it. Or jail. Like, you've been warned this day from the Most High God, brother. Right. Game Come on. Right. 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 Well, though we walk in the flesh. So God says, listen, though we walk in the flesh, you're walking in the flesh. Mean this. You have a fleshly body, right? right. Your skin, right? right? You walk in it, right? So though we walk in the flesh. You with me? Read. We do not war after the flesh. But we don't war, fight. Like what's a war? A fight. We don't fight after the flesh. Meaning it is not a physical fight. You understand? Read it again. For though we what? For though we war. Okay, for though we walk out in the flesh. So Paul is saying, although we're in this physical body, we're walking in this physical body, we do not war. After the flesh. We're not warring after these physical bodies physically. It is not, it's not, oh, you know what? The white man, look at all the stuff he's doing. I'm going to hurt him. You understand? It ain't that. Paul is saying that's not the way to do it. Because you said, what do you still do? Take, fight against the government? That's not the answer. That's not the answer. Then you'll end up shot dead like Bobby Hutton. He thought that was the answer. The Black Panther Party, he got shot down. They got tired of oppression. They took up guns to go against the government, the police officer in, in California, and they got shot down. Bruh, you're gonna lose the fight if you think it's physical. You with me? You understand? Read on. First so four. Get mental. It's, it's spiritual. Okay, yeah, mental is another way to say it. It's spiritual, it's mental. You understand? Read this. For the weapons of our warfare. So God is letting you know, I'm giving you weapons. God is supplying you with weapons. But what type of weapon is it? It's knowledge. It's the word of God. That's the weapons he's given you. It's not, I'm gonna give you this nine millimeter. 
that's not the weapon. I'm gonna give you a four. You know, I'm, it's not physical. You understand? I'm gonna give you a knife, a sword, brass knuckles. It's not a physical fight. So God is supplying you with weapons, but it's nothing physical. You with me? Read. For the weapons of our warfare uh -huh. are not carnal. It's not carnal. Come on. But mighty. But it's it's strong. It's powerful through God. Through God. So our power is through the faith in the Most High. You understand that? Come on. To the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down, pulling down, you with me? Yeah. Of strongholds. Antoine, what is a stronghold? In other words, what's an addiction you see among your own people? Crack is a stronghold. We gotta pull it down. But for example, the way they try to help crackheads is through a rehabilitation center, you understand? And it's so they could change mentally. A rehab center is to mentally get that person's mind away from that crack, for them to let it go. So God wants you to mentally get your mind away from the strongholds of society. Right. Whether it's crack, whether it's cocaine, whether it's marijuana, whether it's ecstasy, whether it's adultery, whether it's murder. For example, El Pedio's in the game. He had probably committed murder, maybe. You understand? Stole something. You know, maybe stole something, stole cars, you understand? You with me? Read it again. To the, to the pulling down of strongholds. So what's another stronghold on our people? Christmas. Everybody celebrates Christmas, right? God says Christmas is evil. You understand? Good question, we're gonna get that. Read on. Casting down imagination. God says our job is to cast down imagination. Why? Our people might imagine that Jesus Christ is Caucasian. God says our job is to cast that down. Mm. Our people might imagine that it is all right to celebrate Christmas, right? You thought it was all right. God says, cast it down. El Pedio thought it was all right to be a blood. God tells us to cast it down. A lot, we have a lot of imaginations in our hearts. But it's evil. It's evil. You understand? Attention. Attention. America is on the brink of destruction. America, according to the Holy Bible, is called Babylon the Great. America has spent billions of dollars to keep something secret from you. But I'm here to let you know. To all you black men and Latino men, you're not blacks and you're not Latinos. You make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Conquered and destroyed between 1492 and 1620, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, according to the King James Holy Bible 1611. Conquered, destroyed, renamed, reclassified. According to 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 40 to 45, you are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are your forefathers. Those are your ancestors. Wake up. Christianity has conquered and destroyed our people, brainwashed us, set up and based upon lies. The deliverer is Jesus the Christ, the black messiah. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14.